Thank you so much for inviting me. This was a very long and ambitious project that we worked on together, which we are very excited to share with the Hong Kong audience and also the international audience. It's really heartwarming to see the flags and demos installed together, especially at the hall, because it is a public space. An idea of inviting the community into the exhibition and to ask this question about the relationship between code, textile, and care. And we do it in a way of creating this temporary furniture where the visitors could sit on, move around, and it's very inviting. The demos is about asking the relationship between the virtual space and the physical space. So that's a perfect way of uh, opening up the exhibition. Yeah, the banners are made specifically for the hall. And I wanted to introduce the characters of the interweaving poetic code. And the very first row, you have a binary poetry. That poetry is a background for my uh, practice. In the exhibition, Amor Muno's piece uh, introduces binary calculation uh, very precisely. Andreas was inspired by many different sources, including video games and simulation spaces like Minecraft, which is a very popular video game for young people. The walking chairs represent learners, people who could be students, people who are investigating their own ideas. And they often have just three legs because the other legs are as busy walking. And I like the idea of abstraction and they are all shaped slightly differently. So it's idea of an active learner. And in the way, we are inviting the audience into the exhibition as an active learner. Interviewing Poetic Code is an exhibition and programs question the relationship between textiles and code and idea of care. CPU Dumpling Workshop was, it's about half cooking class on how to make dumpling and have introduction to central processing unit, which is the core of a computer and computer architecture. Um, I think this piece is a really good introduction because I see my practice as a builder of metaphors and metaphors work really well and sometimes, and it's not always working though, because you know metaphors have limitation but metaphors allow a space for imagination and it makes a space for taking a chance. So most people think they don't understand computers. And I wanted to open up the exhibition with a very playful workshop so that the museum visitors who is, is not scared by the concepts. This painting is about the concept of computation. And I wanted to open up the exhibition of equation of like co-thinking as com computation and inviting the audience to think together with me. These handmade computers are created as teaching tool and also a sculpture. It was important for me to learn to make a computer. In order to have a poetic expression, you need to understand the fundamentals it has the minimal component of transistors and LED, and it does a 8-bit computation. And the drawings there accompany the sculpture. Some of them are just technical explanation of how these things work, and other things are more philosophical, asking about our relationship with technology at large. Physics actually plays a really important part in all of this. Um, just understanding electricity, the current, voltage, resistance. These are very simple language of the physical world that computer runs on. But in order to make the handmade computer, I had to learn physics. And this time it was much more interesting and I had a really good time understanding. And the drawings actually are my way of visually explaining how physics work inside of a computer. So the paintings give more space for me to explore um, ideas compared to the drawings. And painting is more meditative 
and it takes much longer time. And these two paintings are actually about analog and digital as uh, two different ways that computers communicate. Yeah. So idea was that these are virtual gardens and um, there are creatures that live there and they look kind of like mushrooms or dinosaurs. And if the visitor used their smartphone to connect to the local Wi-Fi, they can see the creatures coming into their screen. And I think the beauty is when you are visiting with your friend and both of you connect to the same garden, the creature walks from one phone to another. I wanted to create a different kind of internet where the physical relationships are honored and where we are not relying on the centralized corporate services. So it's a kind of an imaginary internet where it's uh, the metaphor here is a garden. I think that's really interesting to think about Wi-Fi as an artistic space, the connection between physicality and the digitality. The performance is titled Distributed Web of Care. The idea is that there are ways to materialize internet and different kinds of network with our own bodies using simple materials such as a string. And after a lecture performance, I invite the whole audience to become part of the network and oftentimes involved in music and different kinds of accessibility features. In this photograph, which is a documentation from the Whitney Museum, the person at the center is actually a blind person and she's communicating with other um, members of the network just by the string. That relationship where um, strangers can talk to each other using their bodies and uh, take care of each other and be vulnerable and take risk in kind of creating this web. That's really beautiful and also therapeutic. Obviously, this happened all before COVID-19. So um, I think this piece really captures a moment in time, idea of imagining for different types of future with technology. So the mural was an illustration of different ways of making network. And I often use strings and other materials to visualize the relationship between different nodes. And at the very center, there are two people who are guiding each other. And one has their eyes closed and then the other person is guiding them safely. So this idea of care is about interdependence between two people. And there are other technical terminologies such as decentralization, distribution, information, and data. And there are really important distinction between these uh, and political connotations of these word choices. But other than going really deep into the technical details, I try to open up the space for people to play and to imagine like what kind of technology do you want and what kind of internet do you want to build for the future. In the exhibition, we have the Future Proof, which is seven motorized wind chimes that operate at a different frequency. And the piece was initially created for a performance in Media City, Seoul, uh, Biennial. Christine and I had this idea of creating wind chimes that do not need wind. We thought the wind chimes are like a different types of clock because, you know, if you go to a temple, there are wind chimes that are just very slowly giving sense of the time passing. So we really liked that idea and we wanted to think about the future of time. And we thought making of these motorized sculptures could be a tool and an updated version for chat which we made uh, interactive so the visitors could press the textile and activate the wind chime. Christine's drawings are also 
different types of futures in American Sign Language. So Christine is born profoundly deaf, meaning、uh, she does not hear anything, and she communicates with sign language primarily. And in sign, there are various ways of saying future, kind of like pointing out your arm and waving forward. But there are many different types of future, like a very jagged future, or McDonald future, or a confused future. So these drawings are different ways of signing the future. I was really fortunate to work with the textile manufacturer in Hong Kong, who agreed on making a custom a piece that are code examples. So these are very basic codes that people like to learn and use. And for example, the code is about making a shape of a triangle using JavaScript. And there are many ways of doing that. So I've explored、uh, various ways. The panel on the left are the code, and the right side is the execution, which are the output. And I made this into textile, thinking that the Blind people are invited to touch the code. Most of the blind people use screen reader, which、uh, kind of make the text into an audio format. But textile has this versatility to be more flexible and forgiving to touch. In thinking about the exhibition, I try to invite artists. Uh, whose practice are different from each other? Arati has been exploring the relationship between memory, cultural heritage, and machine learning algorithm. So she has found some photograph and textile patterns、uh, from her family, as well as a found footage of Indian heritage. She has been creating these generative patterns、uh, from those data. I thought that's a really interesting way to use code and also textile, and a beautiful way of using machine learning to be more expressive. Machine learning is oftentimes used just to create an average of a very large data set. You know that could be used for. Predicting stock markets, or it could be used for anything, but in this case, is a very personal and tactile approach to code and textile. These patterns do hold connection to the land and heritage, probably not in a direct way,、um, possibly in much more、um, kind of remixed way, if that makes sense. And if that is an identity of the artist. Yes, but I think the more striking part about this piece is、uh, trying to think about how machines see the world, and if the machines see these textile pattern and replicate it, what it might look like.、Mm. So rather than just thinking about human cognition, perhaps collaborating with the algorithm to create something new. Amor's piece is exploring the relationship between code and textile in the most direct way, and she invites the audience to the process of encoding and decoding. And she has these game boards and、um, invites the audience to decipher certain poems、um, in the tapestry. It's just a really beautiful execution of how computers and textile have this relationship, and how a simple form could become a beautiful and very impactful manifestation of the relationship. I want to talk about the importance of craft. These are just really well crafted. Mostly by hand, that level of dedication and care into the material is an important part about the exhibition. I met Kobakant when they were starting their collective many years ago. They were exploring the connection between textile and computing by making everything themselves, and also they are very、um, 
great storytellers. So when they made this、uh, tailor shop in Berlin, they invited the local audience to imagine what kind of garments that they want in the future, and they try to make it. And some of those garments are in the exhibition, and they have some functionality. But most importantly, the connection between the imagination to、uh, the interaction is important for this piece. I guess we are missing that kind of relationship with each other and to the things that we buy. And Kobakan is actually asking that question: like, what if in the future we have that relationship with the tailor? Some of these、uh, garments have technical functionality. One of the gloves is for a person who has a missing finger. The garment is actually used by the client on an ongoing basis, so it has practical. Elements as well as the poetic and suggestive elements. So Laura is an academic. She's a professor who has published very widely about e-textiles and the relationship between weaving and code. The particular pieces that we have brought in, there are two pieces. The one is a textile that work as a computer memory. An idea is that it holds the bit of information inside of the textile, and she has hand crafted the whole piece. If the computers were not made with silicones and electronics, but with the textiles and entirely by hand,、uh, the practicality and usability of these computers are unlikely. However, it does show that computers are essentially these conceptual machines that. You know, we could weave. The second piece is a garment that she wore、um, during the pandemic. She has to take care of、uh, very young children as a mother, and the garment actually kept track of the parts of her body that she was using to hold other, you know, her child. In the garment, actually replays those patterns through heat. So, if you use the special camera, you can see the patterns of the very bodily、uh, labor replaying into the garment. So, this is really fascinating way of thinking about the corporality or the materiality of the body, the textile, and the labor that you perform for your loved ones. I had about a month. Time in Hong Kong. One of the things that made it special was a visit to the Ebenezer School and Home for the Visually Impaired, and it's a very historic school for the blind students. With the chat team,、um, I was able to do a few experimental workshop using textile, and the outcome was these three garments that I tried to invite the students to touch. And each garment has a different network diagram: the centralized, decentralized, and distributed. And the students were also invited to make their own network. And they talked about their friends abroad and、uh, how they communicate、uh, using the internet. We've conceived of the unlearning space as a space where the visitors could touch. Play and make something, and we called it unlearning because we didn't want to enforce a very strict rule about what to make. And the visitors can take the kit and work with the tutorial to make something of their own. You know, we want people to see the exhibition, but also feel like they could make something of their own. Idea of unlearning is that you can. Challenge what you learn and how you learn. If I called it a learning space, I'm expected to have the book, tutorial, and a lesson to follow exactly what to do. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted people to ask, "What do I want to make?" These are、um, notes and drawings that I made over the few years. I think unlearning is this concept that came out of being part of academia. As a professor, but also as an alternative educator.
The last wall is from my residency at Chat. I was very inspired by the people that I met, the types of communities that I was invited to, different reactions to social change and creative practices. You might notice that some of the drawings actually have Chinese characters because I was trying to communicate some concept to my Hong Kong-based friend, and.、Um, I'm happy to exhibit it in chat as a final note,、uh, end note for the exhibition. Something that is personal is also very political, and you know we are not isolated from our surroundings. And for the exhibition, we wanted to explore the idea of care and the practice of caring for somebody or caring for the world. Honestly, that is something that I continue to struggle with. I don't have the answers for that. However, I wanted to share some of the questions that I have about myself, the relationship, technology, and society.、Mm -hmm. I think Hong Kong is a very big part of this. The exhibition is really for that audience and that space, and I I hope that the Sunwan people appreciate it.